Hey there, everybody. This is Kaylee McMahon with Number One Leading Ladies, a podcast by women for women, where we build each other up instead of tear each other down. Uh, today, we have a really special guest with us today, and she's got some really interesting insight on a piece of investing in real estate that I've actually never really thought of, besides just a concept. You know how McDonald's owns the land below um, all of their assets. And it's like, well, how do you do that? And how is it valued? I, I have no idea. So today we're going to have our special guest introduce herself and then give us a little bit about um, herself and um, the genius that she is when it comes to real estate investing dirt. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. I won't do it justice. Awesome. Thank you for having me here today, Kaylee. And I really like what you said about helping each, lifting each other up and not tearing each other down. <laughs> A piece of what I do in the world is trying to heal that sister wound. So acknowledging women around the world. And I love that women now are taking wealth into their own hands and looking for different opportunities that are out there. So I'm Marcella Silva and I'm a certified land banking specialist. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. And what land banking is, is basically acquiring land in the path of growth. So General Douglas MacArthur says it best when he says all a man, I'm gonna say, or a woman has to do to get rich in America is find out where people are going, get there first, buy land while it's affordable and then wait. So land is an asset that is always needed, will always be needed, can never be replaced. It's the original investment on earth. If you think about it, wars have been fought over it and the key with investing in land correctly is you, you have to buy it right from the get-go. A lot of people have failed when trying to invest in land on their own. That's why it's important to use the experts as with anything in life, go to the experts. Don't try to be an expert of everything because it's just not going to happen. So hopefully that uh, is a good start for us, Kaylee. 100%. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your background. Um, now I'm going to ask you some questions like we're just on a friendly phone call. Um, so one of them I really like to know about our guests is so you have your own business or probably several um, at this point in time. And there's a learning curve for I would say women for sure. Um, when it comes to getting access to capital when it comes to getting actual traction in your business. And so one thing I do like to ask is a little bit about that story. So what did it take to go from I have an idea to making a business uh, happen on a piece of paper to actually getting it to traction. Um, some people have to start off, you know, living in their parents' house just to get started from ground zero or like me, put your first business on a credit card. Like what did it actually take uh, in the nitty gritty to go from startup to uh, traction? Sure. Um, so, well, me, I'll just tell you how I got involved with this. I actually used to be a software engineer working for the government, had the high security clearance and everything. And I worked for the government for about 10 years. And in 2007, the government lab that I was working with went through a major transition. And as a result of that transition, they completely changed their benefits, including retirement. So I had a choice at that time. Do I take the old 401k program and roll it into the new 401k system they were putting together? Or do I do something else with it? And Kaylee, I remember at that time sitting at my kitchen table, looking at my 401k statement, thinking to myself, the only way this goes up is when I put money into it. This is ridiculous. I'm never going to be able to retire at this rate. And I don't understand it. I mean, like, what is this and who's really making the money behind it? So I decided, you know, I, I really want to own a real asset that I can see that I can touch and that has actually created wealth for people. You never hear stories about that people's 401k creating wealth for them. Most people can't even retire on their 401k, right? And I'm sure you hear this kind of story over and over again. So I, at that time, I decided, well, you know, the real asset that's always created wealth for people is real estate. I got my real estate license, not that I planned on selling real estate. It was just kind of my own nerdy self wanting to understand real estate at a deeper level. And I started reading books about investing in real estate, going to real estate seminars, just educating myself about it. And along the way, you know, I decided that the idea of rental properties and such 
I'm going to say tenants, toilets, and termites, and I'm not saying that to put it down. It just wasn't for me. I didn't have the time, patience, or resources for it. So when I, one day I went to a seminar and I sat next to a lady who started telling me about land banking. And I was like, land banking, what the heck is that? I had never heard of that. They never talk about that in any of the seminars or anything. So I went and saw a presentation and it was one of those it was a gut feeling. I trusted my gut and I saw that and I was like, yes, this is exactly what I've been looking for. So I took my old 401k, rolled it over into a self-directed IRA. And that was beginning of 2008 before I lost all my money in the stock market. Divine right timing there. Thank goodness. Yep. And bought my first property. And I mean, the rest is history. I fell in love with not only my land, but the company, I actually ended up retiring from being a software engineer to become a full-time land banker, which, so basically how that works is the company that I work for, they've been doing this for over 40 years. They find the land, they do all the research. And my job is to educate investors about this opportunity and support them in investing in it if they feel like it's a great diversification for them. So it's really an easy process and it doesn't take a lot of money. Minimum investment, 25 grand and someone can be a property owner without uh, going into debt or anything like that. So that's in a quick nutshell, kind of my story and growing the business, networking, connections, it's all about connection in life, <laughs> building communities in various different ways. I mean, beyond just business, community is evolution for us. So having communities, and I really appreciate what you're doing over on your end in building your community, Kaylee. When you talk about community, is that something that you needed to go create yourself or were you able to find that? For example, you know, you mentioned a seminar and then probably a more specific or niche type seminar about the type of investing that you do now. Um, in finding people that could kind of guide you, whether it was mentorship or whether it was a community group of people, did that exist out there for you or did you have to build that as a part of your journey? I've kind of created it. Well, I mean, there's, there's networking opportunities all over the place. You just got to get out there and meet people and get beyond yourself of being afraid to put yourself out there. And as you continue to do that, you keep growing and growing and growing. And it's all part of the journey towards creating wealth. You have to create that wealth within yourself first. And so putting yourself out there, meeting new people and circumstances, the right people just come. You just trust in that and it shows up for you. And that community starts to grow and then you get a follow followership as well and start building that community that way. So various different avenues, not just one particular way. And then in what you do was the first step uh, that uh, event you went to, or was it having to find somebody one-on-one -on -one to do sort of like a, I don't want to call it mentorship. It could be uh, sponsorship, mentorship. You know, for me, my first deal uh, sponsor wise, I had to find somebody else that would be willing to vouch for me and sign on loans and help me get going. What did that look like for you? Yeah. So it was really being at the right time at the right place. I met somebody who started telling me about land banking. She invited me to um, the, the local manager in the area who taught me all about it. And then they helped me with acquiring a parcel of land. Very so cool. that's how it started. Very cool. So definitely, you know, being able to network with other people, it sounds like is absolutely critical and crucial. And I'm sure it also is too, because, um, you know, until we fully move into a digital AI world where we're able to basically have triggers that would tell you, okay, when a piece of land would be available. Most now, right, uh, most of the conversation right now probably goes where you have to know Joe, who knows Bob, who knows Sally, who knows there's something happening. And then, oh my God, there's 25 acres over here that's available that hasn't been listed yet um, that we can actually use as an investment. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I mean, Yes. And that's, that's what the company that I represent, they do all of that work and it is through relationships that they do that, but also extreme due diligence and research and understanding economics. I mean, there's a lot that goes into acquiring the right land. Um, but as far as me connecting with investors, yeah, community, 
relationships, building trust with people, all of those things. So there, there's kind of two different sides to the business, if you will. And this business is different than um, I'm sure what you're doing on your end. So looking at it, even though it's real estate, land is very different than traditional real estate. And yeah. acquiring it is very unique too. So right. it has to be the right lenders. circumstances. There's a lot of lenders out there that won't even touch it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You have to have specialized knowledge, a specialized network. Um, when it comes to your biggest lesson, what, what does that look like? My biggest lesson just in life or in business? <laughs> well, I think in both. Now that I really think about it, it is trusting myself, trusting in what I believe in and knowing without a doubt that this is the right path for me and trusting my gut. One of my biggest investors, she says, you know, Marcella, nature never lies. And she's in her almost 80s. And what she meant by that is trusting your gut instinct on things. It doesn't lie to you. And if you think back on it, when we don't trust it, we think back like, oh my gosh, we should have trusted that. But we got in our head about stuff. So not letting fear control our lives and our actions and hold us back from opportunities. I've seen so many times where people are afraid to really step into something new. 100%, I could echo what you just said all day long. Um, and even if you do fail at the thing that you try at, you know, guess what? Uh, you learn something and then you'll never do it again. But you didn't, I always say this, you didn't die. Like you, even when I've lost everything, you know what I mean? You go, okay, well, guess what? That mistake will never happen again. And I'm going to tell everybody that I know how to not make that mistake, you know? So hundred percent, that's huge. And I hope that everybody in life gets to where you are. It, that's a very mature thing to say. Um, so in, in a very um, conscious and aware and present person to be able to step back and listen and, and kind of like observe yourself uh, to be able to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Okay. What would you say has been your biggest win? My biggest win? Um, gosh, <laughs> owning 2 million square feet of land in the most high growth areas of California, 2 million square feet that I bought for an average of 50 cents per square foot. And one of those properties I'm looking at potentially selling for over $20 per square foot. So that's a huge win on the financial side. And the, that, that's the financial side. And I'm going to change that from the business side too, because you know business is different even though it is still related because it is again coming back to our own conscious and aware thoughts and our true feelings around wealth and if the possibilities of it but as as i've grown as a person i've been able to my wealth has continued to grow i've been able to continue to acquire more land and i've also grown a team of people who now i'm a mentor to and I educate them and help support them and their community around investing in land. So lots of wins all the way around. And again, it goes back to your own self-awareness and beliefs. hundred percent. I mean, and I hear the same theme, I think from probably the most successful people, they always say the same thing. Um, I see people that have success where it's like, you know, but the ones that I mean over time have consistent success and um, someone that I would want to follow and, and look up to um, tend to be very in touch with, with who they are inside. Uh, and that's a hard place. I'm on that journey right now trying to figure that out, you know, so it's incredible that you're there. And I'm glad to have you on our podcast to be able to, to just kind of continue to reinforce that, you know, what is the key success ingredient, you know, and it's, it's self-awareness. I really think it is. Um, and then when you're self-aware and your value doesn't necessarily depend on what you're doing or things outside of you, um, that's when you really have the, the biggest amount of power to make the right decisions at the right time and listen to your gut because you're not um, buried under a mountain of pressure that's artificial based on mm -hmm. time and other people's expectations, et cetera, you know, so 
That's incredible. Amen to that, Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> incredible. So I really love these interviews that just keep reinforcing the same message. You know, it's like, get in there. You know what I mean? Like take the time to, to be with yourself. Um, so those are really the questions that we asked. Now, I have a couple of extras just because I know nothing about what you do. And it's a little bit selfish, but I'm hoping those that are listening maybe have the same questions. Um, when it comes to the land, one thing I've heard of is being able to essentially do what McDonald's does. So for example, if you own the land or you and a couple partners own the land and someone says, I want to come in and I want to do a development, um, but I don't want to buy the land. Uh, you can keep that. You can keep the mineral rights. You can, that's, that's your thing. But I would just like to essentially lease back the land from you to be able to build the structure. Um, my question is, is what does that look like as far as, um, having a negotiation with somebody, um, like, is it like a triple net lease or is it like a gross lease or is it like a net profit lease or is it like, what are the possible ways to set that up? Sure. Well, at, at least just backing up to the idea of owning the land that McDonald's sits on. I mean, that's a really easy way to paint the picture of what land banking is. Just imagining where you grew up, maybe what's now a prime commercial area, but when you were a kid, there was nothing there. It was literally a dirt lot. And being able to have the vision and foresight and understanding of buying that land ahead of time, even when people say you're crazy and the development comes to you. Land, like I said before, is needed for everything. So it's not just commercial, it's, it's residential, it's industrial, and industrial is huge, especially right now because of e-retailing, because of cannabis, because of manufacturing. I mean, there's, I could go on and on around industrial. And then what is causing the largest land rush in California's history that most people have no clue about is our transition away from fossil fuels to alternative energy and the state mandates that are now in place for that transitioning to 100%. And not just that, but you got to think bigger. Well, we're, what different industries are affected there? The automotive industry. As we're moving to electric vehicles, where is that energy coming from? So being in the right areas and owning the land that's needed to create the energy. Think the Rockefellers. I mean, they're the, they, if, if John Rockefeller was alive today, he'd be the richest man on earth, all because of energy and where those energy sources came from. So fossil fuels, no longer. It's going out of the picture. It's now at the tipping point, past the tipping point, where alternative energy is cheaper than fossil fuels to create. So we've been over the past decade seeing all the large oil companies moving away, divesting from uh, fossil fuels towards alternative energy. Now that's a very long spiel to basically say, and a lot of those companies are leasing the land from our investors anywhere from 25 to 35 years where they're getting, you know, so much per acre per year, typically with a 2% annual increase. And in, in traditional real estate speak, I don't know exactly what that is as far as triple net and this, that, and the other, but these are opportunities that are not going to last very long. These projects can be anywhere from one square mile, 13 square miles large. Some of these are as large as a city. And that's a tremendous amount of land. That's why the largest land rush in California's history is happening and it's being pushed forward by the government. So there's lots of different opportunities. It's not always land leases. Uh, many times it can just be an outright purchase of the land. So maybe you bought it for a dollar per square foot and sold it for $15 per square foot as an example. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very cool. Uh, that was one thing I was curious about if somebody could just kind of like slide in there as being someone that did uh, represent a uh, representation for leases of, of land, you know, because sometimes that would include some sort of a payment to someone who is an agent and wanting to get into the land industry who maybe doesn't have a ton of cash, maybe doesn't even have 25 grand. And they're like, okay, if I'm on the rep side and then I collect a fee, then maybe I can actually transfer it to like equity if I um, negotiate with the, the buyer, you know, if that's how I want to get paid kind of thing. I'm just kind of thinking in that sense of how do we um, structure things creatively to be able to create equity uh, long term for those that may not have access to a lot of wealth, you know, to be able to go passively invest. Right. Yeah. And so thinking 
that idea would be coming from the developer side, which right. we're not on. I'm on the, I own the land. You need my land. You got to pay for it, whatever that might be. So um, I do work with people who maybe they don't have cash and I pay really good referral fees. So, I mean, this one lady, I paid her over 50,000 just last year in referral fees and she's taken that money and invested it in property. So that's an easy way to yeah. generate some cash with this business, just sharing the opportunity because it's not something most people know about, but they think about, like you had mentioned, Kaylee. Um, now, what does it take? So for example, um, when somebody is wanting to... Um, I'm trying to think how I want. Oh, so I don't know if this is part of your process or not. If, if someone has a long-term vision for creating something that includes the first, you know, first purchase of land, and then they go, okay, well, we can figure out how the land purchase happens in cash. Or like maybe my group comes together with cash to buy that land. Um, and do you guys get involved when it comes to uh, working with a lender so that we have like a bridge loan or a, a long-term structure for, okay, we're going to do something with that land at year or whatever. And in that situation, we're going to use the value of the land to build the structures. Um, do you guys get involved with setting that whole thing up? Or is that kind of like you purchase it and you go to the next? This, it's simply buy and hold. We're not spending money, we're making money. And developing can be very expensive and very risky. So we work with just investors who want an easy passive investment that will work for them. They're not getting involved with getting loans and, and, and you know, uh, developing all of that. So that's, that's a different stage in land. There's multiple different stages in land. We're at the very beginning easy stage buy and hold and there is no financing for it so it's you know cash 401ks iras 1031 exchanges are an option so people i have a lot of people who are selling rental properties and doing a 1031 exchange buying land with it or maybe they buy another rental property and they have some extra monies left over in the 1031 exchange they can buy land with it to you know not let the government take their money might as well invest the government's money as much as possible and i also have people who've done like helocs those types of things oh. to acquire land with and people can uh, do syndications with each other so you can actually have up to four non-blood related partners per property in a regular gen uh, uh, tenancy in common partnership or you know if somebody had an llc set up then obviously that as many partners are in that llc that yeah. could acquire the land that's very cool yeah so obviously you can tell that i don't know anything about it um as far as like the different stages that are involved i'm aware of the actual you know development process uh learning learning about that with multifamily specifically okay so we need an engineer we need an architect we need a designer we need a building supply company like that stuff is kind of where i'm learning but then there's a big gap in my knowledge even um so i'm glad that we were able to bring someone on to our podcast that could at least explain how to get started because i mean if anything in life like that's the biggest thing that holds us back from being able to get anywhere is just getting started. And it sounds like, and I, and I can vouch for this, even right now in a, not, not a full ground up development, but even just like flipping an apartment, there is a process or a phase where you have like super low cash flow and everything gets really scary. And that's always, it always happens and we're used to it. However, when something in the market hits at the same time where that's happening, that's where you run into this like big amount of risk. And uh, especially I will vouch as a woman for other women that we tend to really like physical stable assets that are not super risky, but however, have the opportunity to be able to make a great return. Um, and so land definitely sounds like that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's why, that's why it attracted me. And yeah, it doesn't require the capital and effort and understanding that like development would yeah. How do I read these PLs? How do I, you know, it's like, we don't have those. Yeah. A lot. yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today and educating us a little bit about how uh, land and dirt is gold. Um, that's really important to be able to understand anything. For me, I learned a long time ago that you see with your eyeballs is something that you can make money from, which is super cool. Um, and I want to also ask for our audience because they're going to want to reach out to you. What would be the best way to contact you and work with you? Sure. 
dirtisgold.com. <laughs> That's my website. So you can go to dirtisgold.com, sign up there. Uh, you can also see my upcoming webinars there if you really want to dig in deeper and learn the details of this. And you can also email me at Marcella, M-A-R-C-E-L-L-A at dirtisgold.com. Pretty easy. Marcella, thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you, audience, for tuning in today, whether you're watching or listening. Please tune in next week. Uh, you already know myself, Kaylee McMahon, will have some valuable content for you that has something to do with wealth creation and investing. Uh, until then, look forward to seeing you and hearing you at that point in time. Thank you. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, everyone.